This is the installation video for the White Rogers 47D01U843 Universal Heat Pump Defrost Control. The box includes materials needed to replace or upgrade most single stage heat pump defrost controls. It includes installation accessories, coil temperature sensor, air temperature sensor, thermostat harness, wiring harness, a universal defrost control, terminal wire, labels, control label, and instructions for easy installation. First, ensure the power is disconnected from the heat pump condenser and the air handler prior to servicing the unit. Remove the unit service panel and open the unit for internal access. Check the part number on the existing control and verify it can be replaced with the 47D01U843 using the cross-reference on the side of the box or the White Rogers mobile app. Take a picture of the existing control for reference before disconnecting wires. Cut any straps securing wires. Using the wire diagram, apply supplied terminal wire labels. Disconnect the thermostat wiring. For this application, disconnect the contactor wires and reversing valve wires. Disconnect the high pressure switch wire. Disconnect the low pressure switch wire. Disconnect the defrost coil temperature sensor. Disconnect the condenser fan motor wires. And finally, remove the board. The universal heat pump defrost control can be mounted in different positions. Determine the best orientation for the control. For this application, the control can be installed horizontally. Install the control using the supplied quarter-inch self-tapping screws. There are two sensors included in the kit that must be installed, an outdoor coil temperature sensor and an outdoor air temperature sensor. Access the coil temperature sensor. For this application, the easiest method is to remove the top and control panel. Remove the sensor from the coil. Install the new coil temperature sensor in the same location as the existing sensor, or at the lowest point on the coil. Use the clip included to attach the sensor to the coil. Route the wire through the unit. Reattach the control panel and condenser top, making sure wires are away from the condenser fan blades. Secure the condenser top. The outdoor air temperature sensor can be placed wherever suitable to measure the ambient air temperature. In this application, it is installed right outside of the control box. Secure the sensor wire, making sure the sensor is in a safe location and not touching anything. Plug the sensor into the two-pin OAT connector on the defrost control. Plug the coil temperature sensor into the three-pin OCT connector on the control. Connect the condenser fan motor wires to the fan in and fan out terminals. For this application, the high pressure switch uses a blue wire with a pink stripe and the low pressure switch uses a yellow wire with a pink stripe. Identify the harness number two to begin wiring. The wires can be connected by installing spade connectors or by cutting off all connectors and using wire nuts. Attach the high pressure wires to the wires labeled HPC on harness number two. Next, attach the low pressure wires to the wires labeled LPC on harness number two. Then attach the reversing valve wires to the wires labeled RV and RVC on harness number two. Finally, attach the contactor coil wires to the wires labeled CC and Y out on harness number two. Now plug harness number two into the eight pin inline connector on the board. Identify the thermostat harness to begin wiring. Connect the Y wire from the thermostat harness to the Y wire from the air handler. Attach all remaining thermostat wires to the thermostat harness by matching the labels. For this application, wire nuts are needed. Then plug the thermostat harness into the six pin inline connector. Dress loose wiring with supplied zip ties. Reconnect the power to the heat pump condenser and air handler. Refer to table two in the instruction sheet to customize setup options. When you turn on the power, you will see a smiley face that indicates the standby status. If the smiley face is sideways or upside down,
the display orientation can be changed. To change the orientation, press the Option button for one second. The control will display D-O. Then press the Select button. You will see the word High. Press the Select button until High is orientated correctly. Find the OEM manufacturer codes in your instruction sheet. Press the Option button until OE is shown. Then press Select until the number that matches the correct OEM manufacturer is shown. For this application, we will select the number 1 for a carrier heat pump. Pre-selected configurations can be further customized by continuing to press the Option button and advancing through the available options. This control allows the defrost type to be set as demand or time temperature. Time defrost can be set from 30 to 120 minutes and will enter defrost at the set time using the coil temperature sensor as a reference. Demand defrost can create homeowner savings by initiating defrost using the air temperature sensor. However, if defrost does not occur after 6 hours, a forced defrost will be initiated. For this application, the carrier heat pump will be changed from time temperature defrost to demand defrost. To set the control to demand defrost, press the Option button until DF displays. Press the Select button to display a D. The reversing valve shift delay feature can be set between 0 and 30 seconds. This limits excessive noise during reversing valve shifting. Auxiliary heat lockout allows the control to act as an outdoor thermostat to prevent auxiliary heat from coming on until the outdoor temperature drops to the selected temperature. This built-in feature allows for energy code compliance in areas requiring an outdoor thermostat. Refer to the instruction sheet for all 16 features that can easily be customized during setup. To test the control, set the thermostat to call for heat. The control will display H for heating. Note that if the H is flashing, the compressor time delay is active. To bypass, press Option and Select for one second. The LED will briefly display a T or wait for the delay to time out. With the heat pump running, the display will show an H. Press Option and Select for one second, and the control will display a T for test mode, followed by a D for defrost. During test mode, the reversing valve will change direction. The auxiliary heat will energize, the outdoor fan will turn off, the defrost test will end, and the control will once again show an H. The control is now ready for operation. Stored errors are fault conditions that can be recalled in the FR menu. To access the FR menu, press the Option button three times or until FR displays. Then press the Select button. The last four faults stored with a maximum of two identical faults will be displayed. Active errors are fault conditions present in the system. The highest priority error will show toggling between the operating condition, followed by a one-second pause. Any remaining active errors are displayed in the ER error menu. Once the condition is corrected, the errors will be removed from active status. In this instance, the display is toggling between H, indicating the unit is operating in the heat mode, and the error code, number 2. The control label indicates a high-pressure switch trip. To clear stored faults, hold the Option and Select buttons for greater than 7 seconds and less than 10 seconds to clear all faults. The display will flash two underscores three times to indicate the faults are successfully removed. Install the control label and reinstall any panels that were removed. Service of HVAC equipment should only be performed by a licensed and properly trained technician. Failing to follow all applicable HVAC standards of operation and maintenance, including applicable codes and manuals, can result in potential hazards, including, but not limited to, electrocution and fire. For single-stage heat pumps, be sure to stock the 47D01U843, which is available wherever White Rogers products are sold. For more information, go to copeland.com forward slash 47D01U-843.